is Lisa. I'm going to be doing a two page layout today to celebrate an accomplishment. I have five photos of myself out here and the reason for that is I want to celebrate something that took me five years to do. So I have a photograph from 2013, 14, 15, 16 and 17. As of the end of the year I will have completed a five year journal. The one I chose to do was from Debbie Hodges website. It was created by Tammy Taylor and I'll have a list uh, or a link to the uh, questions that are part of that journal and the description for this video if you'd like to to do to do this it's it's a really interesting thing to do and once you get in the habit of answering the question each day um, it's really not that big a deal to do and it's kind of fun to see how things change over time the way a five-year journal works is that you have the same question for each day of the year so January 1st has a particular question and you answer it that particular question every January 1st April the 30th has a certain question you answer that question every April the 30th and you can kind of see how things change or don't change over time. One of the questions uh, one day or month asks you what your address is. Mine has not changed in five years, it's stayed the same. Some things change a lot. Um, here's an example of one of the questions and the way I do mine is I took the questions and I just cut and pasted them into a Word document. So I had one Word document for each month of the year and it automatically, when I put them in Word, created the, the um, number format. So each question had the number and then when you press return at the end of a line, it started indenting and outlining with A, B, C, D, E. So my letter A is 2013 and letter E is 2017. Uh, February 1st question was what favorite piece of art do you own? And so I listed different ones. Sometimes it was the same one from, the next, from one year to the next or other times it was something different. And it's kind of interesting to see which pieces that I have uh, fixated on. Of course it doesn't have to be an expensive piece of art, just something uh, that you had. Um, one question that changed quite a bit over time was, this was in September the 4th, where would you like to go? And the first year I had these grand, still had all these grand ideas of wanting to travel to Europe and I put Paris and European spots and that kind of thing. And then the next year it was somewhere with art galleries, museums, theater, good restaurants, pleasant flat walking trails, interesting architecture. Now I know just from that answer that we were thinking about where we were going to retire. And so when I was answering the question, question where would you like to go I was thinking about far off into the future of where we would like to live someday and what kinds of criteria we had and then um, one of the years uh, last year 2016 it was to see falling water in Pennsylvania well I did that this year so that was not on the list anymore and then uh, the last what I put down for this past September was we're starting to think about maybe flying somewhere taking a bigger trip again and so I put down the the national parks in Utah so every question, um, it, it's, it's your answers, and some of them are really short answers, like how much is a gallon of gas, and some of them are what did you accomplish, what's your, been your biggest accomplishment in the last year. So they're, they're, they take more time to answer, but none of them are more than two or three lines of, of typing, so it goes really fast. And I just got in a habit of each day pulling that up on my computer and answering the question. So I'm gonna have to find something to fill that <laughs> void because I've gotten I've gotten so used to doing it. For my scrapbook page, I thought I'd do a picture from each year. I had, these are pictures that I already had uploaded that I have printed for and done, most of them I think have been scrapped somewhere else. I just went through very quickly each of the years and just grabbed a photo that I liked and didn't put too much thought into those. Uh, for papers, uh, my friend Mary sent me a bunch of basic gray papers. I haven't been doing as much scrapbooking this year, so I want to really use some of these. This is the Mint Julep Collection from Basic Gray, and I really didn't need to worry too much about what color. I just need to pick something that I liked. I liked these papers because I liked some of the stickers, Document Every Day, uh, Real Life, Make Today, Absolutely Amazing, Noted. Those are things I think that work well with the theme of this page. There's some cute little envelopes that I could take some of these, um, the stuff from the printouts where I printed out the journals and put in the envelope. And by the way, I decided to print them all because uh, I have them on my computer and, you know, I can back them up to a disc or whatever, but over the years, whatever type of 
format we use disks or flash drives or whatever, it's going to change. So, you know, if I'd done this 20 years ago, that would have been on a three and a half inch uh, drive or disk, and I wouldn't have any way to read that. So sometimes you just need to print stuff. It's like 70 pages of printouts. So I'm going to have to enclose it in something else, probably put it on the inside back cover of my um, scrapbook album, but somehow I want to keep up with those. Now also in this collection of papers, when I don't have a whole collection, but I have quite a few of them, um, there were two sheets of each paper, and what I thought I would do with these is, make, there are a lot of small prints here, and they kind of reminded me of a quilt, and I've really sort of pieced together my life over these 365 questions, so I thought I would do some sort of quilt themed uh, arrangement to the page, and I was looking for, the, there's two of each sheet, looking for two that I could use for a background. And I think I've decided on these two green ones because the other side of these cute little deer, the cute little deer don't really quite go with what I'm doing here. It's a little bit too youthful. So I think that I'm going to use this for the background. Now, normally, when I got two green sheets like this, I think, oh, this would be perfect for nature pages. Let me save these for nature pages uh, or gardening pages. And they would be, and I might regret it, but right now I want to use some paper up. So I'm going to go ahead and use these for the background. Green's my favorite color. Um, and we'll do those for the background, and then I'm going to cut up some of these other uh, pieces. I think probably one of the first things I'll do is decide which of these little stickers that I want to use. What I'm thinking of doing is just um, taking the photos and maybe cutting them and cutting using my circle cutter and cut them out. I'm not sure, but I, I haven't worked out my arrangement yet, but I'm going to go ahead and get started on the arrangement, and I'll just take all of these printouts, which the December one isn't quite complete. Once I get it, I'll have them all together, probably put them in a small binder, a real flat binder like a like you would use to turn in a term paper, or used to use, I don't know what you use these days, to turn in a term paper, um, but to, that kind of thing, to put them in um, the back of my album. So that's my project for today. I'm sorry, I had a really long introduction. There's a lot of stuff there, and I'll start moving on with the page now. I've cut these photographs down to four inch squares, and I'm choosing some of the different stickers. As I was picking out these stickers, I realized that I had this nice frame that would go over a uh, four by six, except I've already cut this photograph down from 4 by 6 so what I end up doing is piecing it back together and it pieced back together really nicely except for th there's one of the seams that showed a little bit and we're going to cover that later on. I'm also uh, choosing some different patterns I since they have printed on both sides I don't need um, as many sheets here to get all these patterns but we'll use some of those and some strips here in a few moments so I'm just piecing this together I've had some issues with my ATG gun and I've finally just given up and I'm just using the adhesive until I run out of what I, ad adhesive I have and I'm going back to regular adhesive. Um, it's some of that adhesive that's rolled backwards. Uh, I found out that that's a thing uh, with the ATG and this is the name brand. This is the Scotch adhesive. I sent them a message. They never responded about the product and I've just gotten fed up with it. So. I hope that you, if you have an ATG, that you like it, but I just have not been real thrilled with working with mine. So I'm just going to go back to regular adhesive, but in the meantime, this stuff sticks really, really well. So I've just taken it off the roll manually, and these um, stickers that came with this collection also stick really well, as you're going to find out here in just a few moments. Now, that's off screen a little bit, but I'm looking at maybe using some of the stickers down there on my photo and definitely a little bit of trim across the photo to cover that uh, very, very faint line of the seam. Now, what I'm going to do with these uh, different pieces of paper is I'm going to trim them down into strips, but, in the me but before I do that, I need to have something to put them on. So I'm taking one of the 12 by 12 pieces and I'm cutting it down into 4 inch wide by 6 inch long um, sheets that I can print what journaling I want to print on. And I've decided to take one, to take several questions and to answer the question, you know, each the answer across all the five years, just like I did in the journal. And I do kind of an abbreviated version of the question on here so that you can get the inform so you can see the information. Some of them are things that changed, some of them are things that didn't. And I ended up deciding on a basket weave for the pattern. And I laid my strips down and then I glued them 
to the back side of the ivory paper where I printed the journaling and then folded them over that. And that may not be the best way of doing this, but it's the way that I found that worked for me. But I get a real neat surprise. As I say, this is, I really did not have all this planned out, um, but I get this really cool surprise when I start creating this basket weave. I, I'm going to have, um, I think, four rows of it to start. I added a little bit of paper from my 6x6 pads just to fill in a few more different patterns. And I'm going to fold these around to the back and adhere them. And I'm just going to adhere them with some washi tape temporarily because the whole thing is going to get glued down to the um, background paper with some of the ATG adhesive that I can take off the roll manually. Now, I ended up trimming the, the tops of these, and what I found was that I had a pocket. And so I thought, well, I ought to do something with that pocket. And then I remembered those little cards in the envelopes that came with this, and so we're going to put those in the, in the pocket. Um, I'm also going to be putting some of the stickers on. So what I did was trim down the top row. I ended up with just three rows of basket weave, or horizontal rows, and that leaves me enough room to put e a card in each pocket. They happen to be just the perfect size. So I did not have this plan, but it's, it's a great way of doing things, and then I can write on the card something about each year. And I do that in my own handwriting, so it's a little bit more personal to the page. And it's hidden because you don't see it unless you take the envelope out and read it. I did intend to have the middle one split over two pages, and with the pocket thing, I can't do that. So I trimmed everything, trimmed that one down just enough, fortunately, before I put the basket weave on, that it's, it's going to fit uh, on the pages. And I thought I would dress these up with a little bit of wood veneer, my favorite embellishment. So I've got lots of different ones there. And this first sticker, I thought, well, let's see what it looks like beside of my photo. Well, it looks pretty good there because it's not coming back up. It is. These are really, really sticky, these canvas embellishments. So I'm just decorating with one of the word embellishments on each of the pockets somewhere and then a piece of wood veneer. And I did the frame around 2017, the last year of this. So my title, I used some wood veneer letters for the title also, and I'm taking a little bit of the paper and the leftover paper and just putting that over on the right and doing the rest of the title. So it says completed a five-year journal. And we're down to just some final embellishments on each of these. I had a couple things I needed to cover up. There's a person in the next to me in the photograph uh, for the middle year there, 2015, and I just wanted to kind of, stranger, I just wanted to cover that up. So I'm going to put uh, something over that. And I had this cute little ribbon thing that's, you know, just kind of emphasizes completion. So I've got a piece of flare, and I'm going to take a piece of the paper and make a little uh, banner to put behind the flare. And that will also give an embellishment up there at the top, a little bit of weight to the top of the page as well. I do end up getting some glue all over the place that I didn't intend to, but I'll get that taken. Well, despite a couple of mishaps with adhesive, uh, which seems to happen to me a lot and always seems to happen on photographs, I am quite pleased with how this page turned out and all the things that I got on here, I did not have a vision for the page uh, of what I was going to do. And the only thing I maybe thought about was sort of scattering the photos along and adding I sort of you know, almost even thought bubbles of, with the different, um, some of the different things from the five-year pages, but I really like how this came out better, picking one question and carrying it forward. And some of the questions had the same answer all the way through, and some of them had very different answers, but it gave kind of a little snapshot of the year. And to give a further snapshot of the year, I've uh, done a little bit of journaling in these um, beautiful cards that came with the... Um, collection from base from I think this is basic but gray mint julep 
anyway yeah it's basically great so um but had a lot of fun playing with some different patterns here got to use quite a bit of wood veneer for my collection i love wood veneer um, and then the stickers that were really appropriate for the page a simple title over here on the end and then i will take all of those printed pages with the five-year journaling and just put those together and put them in the back of one of my of whatever album this uh ends up in my personal albums and so i can maybe look back on that 10 years from now and and maybe answer those questions again and just see if the answer how much the answers have changed over time because it's really interesting some things you know are not going to change or you don't think are going to change and other things really do uh, so it's a really interesting process and again the links for uh, Debbie Hodge's blog and Tammy Taylor's questions are in the description for this video so I hope you enjoyed it thanks so much for joining me uh, today and you can always find more of the videos on my YouTube channel